Purple Robe here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the first two episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi, because they were released together, and as of this filming, that's all that's come out. I'm going to break this episode down, so I guess there are going to be spoilers. I'm realizing the less I like something, the more I don't mind spoiling it for y'all. When something is good, I don't want to ruin it for you, but this, eh, I don't mind so much. Again, this is two episodes, so the review might run a little bit long. We start off with a very brief synopsis of Star Wars Episodes 1, 2, and 3, which are basically the life of Anakin to his apparent death at the hands of Obi-Wan and his subsequent rebirth as Darth Vader. Obi-Wan's relationship with Qui-Gon is depicted, as is the birth of Anakin and Queen Amidala's twins, Luke and Leia. Leia going to, uh, I can't remember the character's name, but you know, Jimmy Smith's, who is a senator. And Luke ends up on Tatooine with his aunt and uncle. Obi-Wan is tasked to watch over Luke. Honestly, I fucking hated those first three movies. So when I watched this five-minute synopsis and I thought, damn, they did a pretty good job doing that. I kind of had hopes for the show. And if they do the entire series in five minutes, I think it'll be good. But they didn't. So we start Obi-Wan Kenobi episode one off ten years after these events. The Jedi have been all but exterminated. Only a very few are in hiding throughout the galaxy. We're on Tatooine, where a group of three Inquisitors, or former Jedi, who have turned to the dark side and are now hunting Jedi, enter a bar. Sounds like a joke, right? Three Inquisitors enter a bar! Ha ha ha! They explain how Jedi really hunt themselves, because all you have to do is threaten an innocent, and they expose themselves trying to save them. Sort of like hunting a toon. No one in the bar gives up the Jedi that's hiding there. So an Inquisitor, Reva, this lady, also known as Third Sister, gets impatient and throws a dagger at the skull of a bartender. And a random Jedi who happens to be there stops it with the Force. So these first ten minutes are fine, okay, and then it starts to get silly. These three Inquisitors let this Jedi escape the bar. He runs around one of them who barely even moves, and then he pulls this red awning down to get in their way. As you can see, that clearly would stop three Inquisitors cold. Oh, yeah. It's just dumb, and it gets worse. We learn that this Reva is the impetuous Inquisitor and wants to find Obi-Wan, while her leader tells her it's not her job, and if she continues to harp on it, she'll be dismissed from her duties. But really, if she gets fired from the Inquisitors, what would stop her from going off on her own and tracking down Obi-Wan? If she only wants it to further her career, as the Grand Inquisitor thinks, imagine what the Emperor will do when she brings Kenobi in without Imperial help. But whatever. Next, we meet up with Obi-Wan, who, of course, is living in his cave in the desert. He's got this shit job that takes him hours a day to commute back and forth to on some sort of camel creature, as well as a long hovercraft ride every day. He does not help people in need. One, because he doesn't want to out himself so that he can continue his mission of watching over Luke, and two, because he feels he's a failed Jedi who has let his powers atrophy. He still has nightmares about the final battle with Anakin, as well as seeing his mentor, Qui-Gon, killed at the hands of Darth Maul. When he buys a toy fighter plane for Luke, Owen pays him a visit, telling him to back off and stay away. Kenobi reiterates that Luke should be trained when he comes of age, but wait, wasn't Anakin too old to start his training at, like, I don't remember, what was he, like, eight years old? Ah, fuck it. Anyway, Uncle Owen says, I know what the deal was, but I changed my mind. As if he has a choice? But okay. The Jedi who escaped the Inquisitors finds Obi-Wan in his cave, begging him for help. Sure was easy for him to find. Hard to believe the Inquisitors haven't been able to find him in ten years. But Obi-Wan turns him down. He's just a shell of his former self. Then we meet Senator Jimmy Smith's wife and their daughter, Leia, who is now a precocious ten-year-old who sneaks off into the woods to climb trees rather than get dressed up to join her parents on official duties. Looks like she's always getting in trouble for this kind of stuff, but both her parents are too soft-hearted to do anything about it. Anyway, I guess Senator Smith is actually a king or something on whatever planet he's from. You know, that's why uh, she's a princess, Leia. And some relatives are in town for a visit. 
Leia's slightly older and cat-like cousin throws it in her face that she's adopted, which, which I mean, is this supposed to be known? I, I thought it was a secret, because, like, everybody knows it. Like, everybody knows it. Meanwhile, the Inquisitors are still in Tatooine, trying to find that random Jedi guy from the bar. They stroll into another mass of citizens, asking for info, again, and are yet again rebuffed. So Reva chops some lady's hand off with her lightsaber to make a point. Now, I love this. It shows you can't fuck around with the Inquisitors. But the other Inquisitor, with her, doesn't seem to approve. However, the Grand Inquisitor isn't with them this time, so he lets it slide. Then, coincidentally, she picks Uncle Owen out of the group of people and threatens to kill him and his family if he doesn't give up the Jedi. Now, Owen knows that Obi-Wan is very nearby watching the whole scene, and he clearly doesn't like him, but for whatever reason, he doesn't give him up. And the now cowardly Kenobi does nothing to help Owen as well. Just as Rev is about to lightsaber Owen in the face, the other Inquisitor steps in and stops her. They get no info from the crowd, and the other Inquisitor, known as Fifth Brother, reprimands Reva for her methods, though she doesn't really seem to care. Uh, I've enjoyed Moses Ingram, who's playing Reva, in the Queen's Gambit she was in and uh, the tragedy of Macbeth, but she seems completely miscast in this. She has two looks, badass and pissed off, and neither are convincing. We go back to Leia, getting a minor dressing down from her father for the way she treated her cousin, and instead of going to apologize like he demands, she runs off into the forest to play, where, of all people, bounty hunter Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers and his minions capture her, though not before she makes them chase her down, which is such a ridiculous sequence. The actress playing Leia is really tiny, and she runs like a mile every three days on these little tiny little legs of hers, and these grown men, bounty hunters, no less, cannot keep up with her. It's, it's just dumb. Anyway, we discover that Flea was hired by Inquisitor Reva, and the kidnapping was a trap to catch Obi-Wan. Senator Jimmy Smits contacts Obi-Wan to beg for help finding his daughter, even though he's a king and a senator, and he must have greater resources than this. He says that he can't go public because it'll draw attention, but I'm not sure what the attention is going to be toward. I, I don't know why. I mean, who cares if there's attention? Your daughter was kidnapped. And Obi-Wan is like, well, you've got an army. And uh, you could hire the best bounty hunters in the galaxy. But no, it can only be Obi-Wan. So I don't like this setup. It's just clumsy writing. I mean, how did Reva know in the first place that Obi-Wan would be the one to come to rescue Leia? And if she knew something, why didn't everybody know this? I mean, none of this makes sense. After the hologram call ends, Kenobi discovers that the Inquisitors had found that random Jedi. They killed him, and they hung him in the town square even though previously they wouldn't let Reva kill him because they wanted to bring him in for questioning. I guess that was, like, really quick questioning. Anyway, when he returns to his cave, Obi-Wan finds Senator Jimmy Smits waiting for him, and he talks Kenobi into going after Leia and tells him what planet the kidnappers took her to. I, I don't know how he discovered that, but I, they tracked the ship or something. But if they could track the ship, I... Whatever. The first episode ends with Obi-Wan digging up the box with his and Anakin's old lightsabers. Dun, dun, dun! So next, Kenobi goes to this planet that the senator told him about, and he runs into some guy named Haja Estri, who basically scams people by helping smuggle him off the planet in the disguise of a Jedi to get people to believe him. And to get people to believe that he is a Jedi, he uses magnets to make like different objects move on their own as if he's using the Force. Somehow Haja knows exactly where Leia is and leads Obi-Wan right there. I mean, come on. He gets into the building with zero difficulty, has a little fight where we learn that his fighting skills are supposedly rusty, and then he forces one of the guys that he beat up to tell him where Leia is. How this guy knows where Leia is, I have no idea. It seems like everyone on the planet knows where she is. It just doesn't make any sense. When he goes to the room that he's told to, Leia isn't there. Flea and his minions are waiting for him, laughing at him that he fell for their ruse so easily. I'd laugh too, since it was a very poorly designed ruse. But it worked, because, you know, plot. Anyway, Kenobi escapes them with minimal effort. Also because, you know, plot. Just as we see Reva walking up to the building, logistics in the galaxy and how people travel is very unclear. Kenobi goes searching through the building, and at the first door he comes to, 
unlocks it with a master key that he very fortuitously stole from a worker who clearly should not have had a key like that, and he instantly finds Leia, who hits him with a big metal piece of shelving that she has. How the fuck does she have a big metal piece of shelving in the holding room that she's in? She tries to run out the door, but Obi-Wan grabs her, which he should, being a Jedi, and Leia being a child who moves very slowly. This info becomes important in a moment, so remember that. Kenobi explains that he's there to rescue her, but she neither believes him nor believes that he's a Jedi. Though the building is something of a maze, they get out with no hassle and head for the port. Meanwhile, Reva puts a bounty on Kenobi that it seems every person in the city sees immediately, and so now everybody in the city is tracking down Obi-Wan. But just as she goes in search of him, the Grand Inquisitor and Fifth Brother and some other sister show up. Now, how the hell did they know about all of this, that she was doing this, that she was there, what was going on, and how did they get there so fast? No clue. Some bounty hunters find Obi-Wan and try to grab him, but he beats them off, and they get away. However, Leia realizes that the hunters are after him and not her, so she runs off. Now, remember a moment ago when I told you how easily he just grabbed her when she tried to run away? And how slowly her little legs go? Well, with some great editing, she's suddenly a gazelle. Only no editing can hide how slow she runs. She climbs up to a rooftop for no other reason than, hey, we should have a rooftop chase. Obi-Wan follows her, and there just happens to be a bounty hunter on the roof, waiting for them. But it's okay, because he's a crappy shooter, you know, like all TV villains can't shoot. So he's just firing away at Obi-Wan, and they're chasing, and yeah. Reva, who has been doing like this Batman, sitting on a rooftop just surveying the city, she sees the gunfire and does sort of a kind of a Spider-Man slash Batman run across the rooftops to get there. There are suddenly two gunmen shooting at Kenobi as Leia, attempting to jump to the next roof, doesn't make it and she falls to her death. That would have been good, except of course that doesn't happen because Obi-Wan uses the force that he's... Yeah, it, it, it had been insinuated that he could no longer use the Force, but he immediately uses the Force to catch her and drop her gently to the ground. And this takes quite a bit of time, and during that time, the bounty hunters neither shoot at him nor try to catch up with him. It's very nice of them. They're very nice bounty hunters. No sooner does Leia sit up than Obi-Wan has raced to her side. How he got down off the roof so fast? Hey, don't think about it. This is definitely not a thinking show. Out of nowhere, Haja finds them, and he says when he discovered Kenobi was a Jedi, he just had to help them. So he gives them a key to an automated transport ship that will take them to friends, he says. Well, Kenobi has no other choice, and the Inquisitors have this whole city locked down, so he takes the key and he goes. Meanwhile, the Grand Inquisitor kills Flea for helping Reva. I like that. See, that makes sense, and so that I like. Reva comes across Haja while searching for Kenobi. He won't give Kenobi up, but Reva touches his forehead and draws the info out of him just like that. <laughs> but if they're able to do this, why the fuck haven't they been doing it to all the townspeople who were hiding Jedi? It's just stupid. And now that she knows Haj has been helping a Jedi, and she clearly has no problem murdering innocents, why does she just let him go? So he can help Kenobi again in the future? You know, stupid villains equal crappy villains. Reva finds Kenobi and Leia at the port. Obi-Wan sends Leia to the ship with the key, but he gets trapped by Reva. Just as she's about to get him, the Grand Inquisitor comes and stops her, and he wants to get Kenobi himself. However, Reva kills him with her lightsaber, giving Obi-Wan a moment to escape. And escape they do, thus ending episode two. But not before we get a shot of Anakin underwater with a breathing mask on. And you can see that he's, you know, he's Vader now. And that's episodes one and two. Seriously, what is the matter with Hollywood writers these days? Why do they suck so much? On the one hand, they set up Obi-Wan's inner conflict. That's cool. He's a shell of himself. He's afraid to help. But then he helps with very minimal pushing. On the one hand, he no longer possesses his skills, which didn't make sense to begin with. But then he reacquires them with zero training. On the one hand, they make Reva this murderous badass, but then she lets Kenobi's collaborator go. On the one hand, Uncle Owen is set up as despising Obi-Wan for what he did to Anakin, you know, his brother. But then given the chance to save himself and his family by turning Kenobi in, he seemingly would have allowed himself to be killed. 
There's no consistency in any of the characters, and that's just a jumping off point for why I'm not enjoying this uh, show so far. Not liking it at all. I may watch more. I may not. I probably won't break down each episode unless there's one that's really good or really, really bad. But I might, after the show's completely over, do a final review. And if I do, I will certainly let you know what I think of it. Well, that's Obi-Wan Kenobi so far. Purple Robe out.